We have been sent a freebie. We don't get many freebies, do we? No. But, right, I think, obviously, so we have been sent this for free. We have to declare that. So we are going to do a video. We're going to unbox this. This is a, what is it, a sea reader, a creeder? Um, I don't... Launch Land Rover scanner. Like version 2. No, they did offer us version 2, and then they said they'd run out, which would be like version 1. And we said, no, we don't want version 1 for free. We want version 2. So they have... There you go, they've got a website there, cnlaunch.com. Go on there, let's see ya. Open it up, what have we got in here? So it's, it's basically a diagnostics thing now. There's diagnostics and diagnostics. Um, so we're gonna have a look at a few things just off the top of my head. Will it work on the new super snazzy Land Rovers? D-O-I-P, that's the protocol. Um, Diagnostics over internet protocol. So actually on the new series 2020-ish on, it might be 2017 on, the cars taught, there's actually a series of computers, all your, your gearbox, transmission module, your security module, they actually had a, an IP network, like your house networking and all that, connecting all the computers together. And the newer ones had the DOIP. So the early tools didn't have DOIP interface built in, they had CAN bus. So we are gonna look if this has got DOIP and CAN bus. Right, so let's have a look. It's got ODB2, which is the generic port. We've got lots of stuff. So we are gonna start by plugging it into our newer Defender and seeing if it can even look right. What do we get in the pack? Lots of silica, they're expecting some humidity. What have we got here? So this looks like a, that looks like an ODB2 or a launch thing. What do you reckon I'm supposed to do with that, Alessia? No idea. Oh, there you just go. use your muscles, Simon. Right, so that's the ODB2 plug. And then that is some RS interface, I guess, that goes into the back. Right, so there's no power lead, no charging cables. There we go, launchtech.co. Limited, right. That You worked out how to turn this on. So yes. there we go, we've got, we got an on button and it got a USB-C charger. So let's have a look, it's got a little screen. Is it going to power up or do you have to press and hold, do you reckon? There you go, press and hold. So we'll have a look. Do we need to set it up? Yeah, we do. We do. We've got to do some nonsense, have we? Is there a quick start guide? Uh, I think it's this one. User manual. We really ought to read the user manual. Right, we'll have a go at setting it up and we'll talk you through it. Right, here we go. Oh, is it is it powered down? There you go. Right. Okay, so it's saying it does give a nice quick start guide. It says... Tap start on the welcome screen. There we go. So it's a touch screen. Yeah, and then you can select your language. We've got English. We'll go to the next step. And then it's going to ask me to select the time zone. Go right. up a bit. Yeah. Did I miss it? Maybe it's that one. Maybe it's Europe, London. That's dodgy, isn't it? Yeah. Didn't they hear a Brexit? Well done, Alicia. Right then. Okay. And then it's saying select network. Look, powerful UK. We might go on the back cave Wi Fi actually. That's got, right, so I guess I'm going to have to log in and give it my credentials for that. Whoa, workshop information. So it, so it, oh, it wants my email address and some other stuff. All right, let's put that in. Oh, it's just, don't do it too quick. Right, and there we go. We're all ready to go. So it says configure, sign user, we've done that. The job menu appears, and it says tap upgrade. Oh, let's upgrade. All right, then. And so presumably now it's got my thingy, it's gonna unselect, like what do we, it's got them all selected by the look of it, so let's just update them all. Right, and that's gonna take its time and rattle through and download those, there you go. So let's let it do all the updates. It's a bit weird, because this is a Land Rover tool, isn't it, when it sold as me as a Land Rover tool. Now obviously it's, they've got these extra things, but it looks like it's probably deleting or resetting the Mercedes, the BMW, the Chrysler, the Hyundai. It's, it's got, where does it mention Land Rover anywhere? Um, yeah. Land Rover Jaguar, yeah. So I think it's going to delete the ones that don't apply and then apply this one. So maybe they ship them all as generic tools and stuff. And anyway, we'll see. But somehow it knew it, I was a, I'd ordered the Land Rover one because they gave it to me. Right, we'll see. Right, it has it all installed. But it says OK or continue update. I'm not sure what to do. What are we going to do with this here? Press OK. Press OK. Yeah. It, right, there you go. So that has all done it. So there we go. So uh, we're Land Rover. Should be two separate words. It's not 
Do you know that? It should be Land Space Capital R Rover. Right, Demo Jaguar. So if we go Land Rover. Right, Land Rover. Okay. Software instruction. Reading ECU. Right, let's jump in the car and have a look what it does. Right, so we've plugged it in under there. So it's just above the sort of to the left of the brake pedal on the Defender. Right, so we have had a little play with it. So Alicia's plugged it in. We showed you that. We've got it. We've had a little play with it. And what we've done is we've actually made a menu tree map. So this is all here. So when you go into Land Rover, you can go auto search or you can go manual search and select the vehicle. And then you can get access to all this stuff. So I'll publish this document so you can all see it. But basically it gives you, if you go into auto select, which is the one where it reads the chassis number correctly, it gives you all these modules you can go into. And it's a bit of a pain for every module you go into, you get this little menu in the corner here where you can see the info, read fault codes, clear memory, and it all works, read data. But it was a real pain to go in and out of these modules. But actually there is a health check. So instead of going into the auto search, you can go into the manually select where you get a list of vehicles and you've got this health report, which was actually quite good. But why it can't do that from the auto select, I have no idea. So you have to manually select your vehicle, which seems a bit ridiculous um and then you get the health report and we did a full scan and then you could actually um send the scan so we scanned this car didn't we and it had a couple of faults on the driver's door and passenger door modules and we cleared those so it does read tick it does clear fault codes tick and we re-ignition cycled and it was all good and we'll show you how to do some of these in a minute so this all works so it can read fault codes it does connect to the car um and it, it, there's another list of another couple of bits at the bottom where you can go on. Um, you can manually select the modules and it gives you some summary vehicle as as to what your car is, what year it was made, everything. OK, and there are some settings menu. There's an upgrade where you can refresh the software and you can also change whether it's in metric or imperial, the brightness of the screen, time zones, language. And you can also change your email address and phone number. But the report it gave was really good. If you were a small garage, it gives you a nice report with the chassis number and what modules were good and what problems were found. And for some of your customers, it would be quite reassuring to get that report i'll put a screenshot of it on the screen now um in fact let's do it now shall we so right so let's have a play who's gonna be right alicia's gonna help me she's good with technology right is that does that is that sort of you got the the screen does that look okay yeah right so oh i've gone in the so this is what happens if you auto detect so it's auto detect the chassis number okay initializing We've got the car on. We've got half the car on. Let me just let's put a bit more of the car on. Chassis number, yeah, that's correct. Um, this model supports online diagnosis, yeah. Right. Okay, so if we go into system selection, this is the one which on my laptop you add all these modules. So you can go into all these modules. If I go system selection, and there was a good one. I mean, there's there's loads of them. You can have a look at my spreadsheet. I'll put the screenshot. But I wanted to go into something like tire pressure monitoring, okay? So we're going into the tire pressure monitoring system, okay? And, oh, what happened there? Did I press the wrong thing, Alicia? Maybe. Maybe. It's a possibility, isn't it? TPM, here we go. All right, connection error. Connection error. But we were in there a second ago, weren't we? Mm. So whether the system has equipped Oh no, what are we going to do? Why is it not having it? It's a bit flaky in it. Let's turn it off. All right, let's turn it on again. All right, we honestly went in here. All right, tire pressure monitoring. There you go. So it's a bit flaky on and off, but right. So you can look at the version, you can read fault codes, you can clear the fault codes. But this was interesting. You can stream live data or read data stream. You would think would be what that would mean. And then it's got a load of components. Now, I was hoping I'd better read the data for the front 
left tire pressure, the front right tire pressure. But you go through all these, you've got engine RPM twice, you've got global time three times, um, and, and global real time the fourth time at the most, and in car cam temperature, loads of stuff, but travel distance three times, vehicle speed three times. And then I guess you can go, and so if we take um, RPM, is one we can emulate here quite easy. If we go on engine RPM, oh, right, and then we go OK, I was hoping I'd better get a live stream of the data. So at the moment it's saying that. And so I guess if I press this, this graph here, I was hoping, now the car's not running. So if you just start the car, Alicia, and I was hoping we would see the RPM sort of going up and down, but there's nothing happening here. So I don't know if I'm using that wrong. Right, knock that off again. That's way too loud. Okay. So now can we go back or let's try the back button. Yeah, the back button. So, but you can apparently record it, but I'm not, I really want to see the live data so you can see what's happening. Um, Because it's quite handy sometimes to see when you accelerate what the throttle position. I don't really want to record it and then play it back because I'm not sure if it's doing it in time with with me as I'm doing it. So that was that. So that's what you can see. Now, if we go back and try and do the health check, we have to go back. Oh, I'll show the back. Or should I just go home? Yeah. Just go home. Bam. There you go. And then we've got to go diagnose. And the current diagnostics, yeah. And then we've got to manually select the vehicle to find that health check thing. As it, a bit flaky, but here we go, diagnose, right? And then if we go into Land Rover, okay, again, I've got all these menus on my spreadsheet. Okay, Land Rover, da, 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 series, yeah. Right, and this is where you've got to go, where you have to go manually select to find the health check. Okay, and then, right, so let's, so these are all the cars we can do. So let's go Defender, and then we've got, whoa, what have we got? We've got 29, I reckon 2019 plus. We're not a plug-in hybrid. Let's go for this. Okay, and then we, you've got this health report option, which only comes up when you manually select, which is balmy. If we go health report, okay, and it's going through all the modules, so... It's always got a fault code. I saw one fault come up. So we could email it to ourselves. No fault, no fault, no fault. Right, we'll let this go through. Right, so there is a fault code. We've got a fault code here. Okay, so I'm going to issue this report. Now, it's saying the electronic parking brake enable command is not reachable. Now, we were... We'll try and clear that because we were actually testing this to see if it could release the parking brake. So when you change the brake pads and stuff. And we did get it to release the parking brake. But if it's created a fault, that's a little bit scary. But right. So let's um, let's send the report. So there we go. And it's going to send the report on the vehicle. Okay. And then it's gonna we're going to share that. Okay. And that will send it to my email. And I'll put a screenshot of what that looks like. So now I'm going to try and clear this electronic parking brake fault, which we didn't have last time. So let's clear the fault. Oh, you want to clear all the system faults? Yes. Okay, so that's cleared it all. Um, right, so let's just let's just put the handbrake. Start the car, Alicia. Put your foot on the brake. Release the handbrake. There you go, that's released it. Put it back on again. Well, no, you should do it again. There you go. Right, the handbrake's back on again. Right, turn it off. And let's, let's, okay, so let's go back here and let's do a health report again. And hopefully we haven't got that fault code back again. So, yeah, ABS module's clear now. Did you see that? Yeah. So that fault code, so there you go. There's a real live demo of it. We, we've created a fault code, we've cleared a fault code, we've reflashed it, we'll just wait for that to finish. Right, so we can do fault code reading, we can do fault code clearing. Now, on the advert, which is very glitzy, I'll put an advert on the screen, it said we can add a new key, didn't it? But we did check with the manufacturer and apparently that was just 
embellishment on their part. They can't actually add new keys because that would have been tricky. I was like, whoa, could we add the activity watch or something? But there would be security concerns around that, which I was also interested in. But it can't do that. It can do it on other models like Volvos, apparently, but not Land Rovers. But in the Land Rover, it said it could. I'll put a screenshot of that. It can't. Um, right, so the live data reporting is a bit dodgy. The fault code reading and clearing, it can do some basic things like the actuators for the parking brake. It can release and put that into service mode which is possibly useful and apparently it can do anti-lock brake bleeding. I haven't tried it, but there are some functions that are not available. What was it we tried to do just now? We tried to do actuator on something and it said something's not available. So, um, right, let me just see if I can find some other oh, calls. it was on the headlights, wasn't it? Yes, on yeah. the headlights. So let, we tried to actuate the headlights. It says, um, so let's go back into that. Well done, actually. So. Da, 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 da. Right, and I'm going to go system selection and it was right at the bottom on it, Alicia. Yeah. Headlamp, control module, okay. And I was going to go actuation test, so I did that a bit quick. And it says not supported. So I haven't been through all those modules and what's supported and not supported. If someone's got the time, they're more than welcome to do that. I'll share my spreadsheet. Um, so, right. Is it useful? Is it? How, what was the retail price on one of these? Hundred and... Five, 105 think. pounds um so is it good right so if we compare it to something like the gap iid tool where we can go in and change parameters and do more i don't even i didn't even see there anywhere where we could do like a service light reset so mm. when the service interval is reached on this um and there were some things the menus are a little bit clunky but i guess it could save you money if you've got a problem with your car and you just want to have a look at what is wrong with it it does do pretty much what it says on the tin but it won't allow you to modify or or trick your car but if you want to do your brakes or bleed your brakes um it might be a cheaper way of doing some of the basic function let me know your thoughts um the case is fairly well built it doesn't look bad and i'm sure they are going to improve it maybe they'll listen to some of my comments you certainly should better get to that that health check should almost be on that front screen where you've got diagnosed just health check bam straight away um hiding it in the manually selected thing is a bit nonsense um right there we go there is my review if you want to send me free stuff um for me to review feel free and then i can share it with everybody right hope you enjoyed that <laughs>